Hey, hey everyone. How is everyone doing this evening? I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Elizabeth and welcome to my channel. Today starts the very first day of me reading my books. So I have written a series of books and my computer is doing its thing back here behind me. I mean, I got my phone propped up on it so I can record. So today's book that I am going to be reading is called Just a Little Frog's Tale, and it's about Frankie the Frog, who lives in the Enchanted Forest. So, this is a children's book. I write small children's books, ages all up to probably five years old, so they're very small books, and I really hope you guys enjoy, and I'm going to read it off my iPad. I was going to read it off my computer, but it's being dumb, so, <laughs> so here we go. Chapter One, A Froggy Tale. Frankie Green could barely contain his energy as he zigzagged through the green leafy underbrush of the forest, his agile frog legs propelling him from one mysterious shadow to the next. The, sunlit dapple, the sunlight dappled the ground with patches of golden warmth, but Frankie's attention was consumed by something far more intriguing than a sun bath. Whoa, he exclaimed as his wide, curious eyes caught a glint of something extraordinary. There, half hidden beneath the gnarled roots of an old oak tree that looked like it could tell a thousand stories, lay a shiny object winking up at him. It was as if the treasure had been waiting just for Frankie, whispering tales of adventure and secrets long forgotten. Without hesitation, Frankie bounded over and with a careful tug, unearthed the most dazzling thing he had ever seen. He held it aloft, turning it this way and that, catching the light and throw rainbows on the leaves around him. The glittering glimmer stone, he declared triumphantly, giving the treasure a name as resplendent as its appearance. He could hardly wait to show Benny Barrington Oh, how Benny's amber eyes would widen in amazement. With the precious glimmer stone gripped gently in his hand, Frankie hopped back towards Benny's den, thoughts tumbling over each other like acrobats in his head. As he leaped between ferns and over babbling brooks, his imagination began to weave a spectacular tale. First, I faced a gargantuan dragonfly, he muttered to himself, rehearsing the story he'd tell Benny. And then I outsmarted a wicked will-o'-the-wisp. With each bound toward Benny, his tail grew taller, filled with daring leaps and narrow escapes, all in the noble quest for the glimmer stone. First, oh, unbeknownst to Frankie, his newfound treasure was more than just a pretty bauble. Within its glimmering depths slumbered the essence of slumber tail, the slumberous. A creature of legend whose snores could shake the leaves off trees and whose awakening could, smell tr could spell trouble for the entire forest. As Frankie imagined himself a hero in his own right, little did he know that his vibrant stone was setting events in motion that would require true bravery, not just the fanciful sort spun in stories told under starry skies, but for now Frankie's heart swelled with pride and his smile was as wide as the glimmer stone's shimmer. What a story this would be! Bounding into Benny's cozy den with the enthusiasm of a spring shower, Frankie Green could hardly keep his webbed feet on the soft, mossy floor. With the glimmer stone clutched in his hand like a trophy won at the Forest Olympics, he wove a tail as sparkling as the treasure itself. Guess what I found, Frankie exclaimed, his voice bubbling with excitement. A glimmer stone, but it wasn't easy. Oh, no. I had to wiggle through the roots, dodge a dive-bombing bird, and even engage in a staring contest with a very grumpy badger. The glimmer stone caught the light streaming in from the den's entrance, casting dancing reflection upon Benny Barrington's gentle face. Benny, whose presence was as comforting as a warm hug on a chilly evening, listened intently, his amber eyes glowing with a mix of affection and amusement. 
Tell me more, Benny encouraged, his deep voice rumbling like distant thunder, yet as sweet as the honey he enjoyed for breakfast. Then, Frankie continued, puffing out his chest. As I emerged victorious, a shadow loomed over me. It was the slumber tail, its teeth as big as pine cones, and its roar louder than the waterfall. Benny's eyes arched ever so slightly, like the elegant bend of a rainbow after a summer rain. His keen sense for truth, honed by seasons of listening to the whispers of the woods, sensed the flavor of fiction in Frankie's fantastic fable. Really? Benny asked, the corner of his mouth twitching in a knowing smile. That sounds quite adventurous. Absolutely, and I bravely told Slumbertail, you shall not have this Glimmerstone. And with the courage of ten frogs, well, maybe eleven, I leapt away with my treasure, Frankie beamed, his imagination painting strokes broader than a beaver's tail. Frankie, Beanie said warmly, placing a comforting paw on the frog's shoulder, you always find the magic in the everyday. Just remember, the most extraordinary tales need not have giants or monsters to make them special. Frankie's cheeks flushed, a shade of lily pad green deeper than usual, but his grin remained as wide as the forest canopy. Unaware that his tale might stir more than just the imagination of his friends, he reveled in the moment, basking in the glow of his own creativity and the sweet serenity of Benny's company. High above the verdant quilt, quilt of the forest, Oliver the owl's sharp ears pricked up. Each hoot and whisper between the leaves carried Frankie's fantastic tail to his feathery perch. Oliver's yellow eyes narrowed with concern as he ruffled his gray feathers thoughtfully. By the moonlit ponds, this could spell trouble, Oliver mused, swiveling his head almost completely around. A glimmer stone, you say? Time for a forest forum, methinks. He took flight silently, gliding between the branches like a shadow in the twilight. His mission was clear. Gather the animals before the sun dipped its golden toes into the night. Meeting, meeting, the trees seemed to echo his call, their leaves rustling urgently. Did you hear about the treasure? chattered a squirrel as it scurried along a branch. Frankie found what? gasped a deer, his, her ears perking up. Monster! Glimmerstone! A chipmunk's cheek ballooned with the weight of the news and acorns alike. As whispers turned into roars of gossip, somewhere deep beneath the roots, where light hadn't danced for a millennia, a monster began to stir. The creature had slumbered through countless moons, its dreams filled with the visions of the lost treasure, the glimmer stone that once pulsed with the heart of the forest. With a growl that shook the very earth, the creature blinked open eyes as old as time itself. It heard the call, the name Frankie Green, intertwined with its destiny. Treasure mine, it rumbled and the ground quivered. The monster lumbered through the underbrush, unseen by all but the moon. Its path led to the cozy clearing where Frankie and Benny lived, but the glimmer stone was nowhere to be found. In its stead was Lucy the rabbit, humming a merry tune while nibbling on a clover. Ah, a messenger, perhaps, the creature thought, its voice like boulders tumbling down a hillside. Before Lucy could hop away, the monster scooped her up. Her startled cries melted into the night as the creature disappeared just as quickly as it had emerged. News of the kidnapping spread faster than fireflies flickering at dusk. As Frankie caught wind of Lucy's plight, his heart sank like a stone in the pond. The weight of his tall tails bore down on him, heavier than any frog should bear. Lucy, oh, what have I done? croaked Frankie, feeling smaller than when he had first left his tadpole tail behind. Frankie, said Benny, placing a reassuring paw on his friend's back. We'll make things right together. The other forest animals looked on, their faces etched with worry and hope. Frankie gulped hard, knowing that the adventure he had once dreamt up was now more real than ever and far more dangerous. All right, friends, Frankie declared, puffing out his chest. For Lucy, for the forest, we'll face this monster and bring our friend home. And so, with determination in his heart and a leap of faith, Frankie readied himself to become the hero he had always imagined 
even if he had never quite expected it to be this way. Chapter 2. The Quest Begins Under the silver glow of a crescent moon, Frankie Green's silhouette quivered against the backdrop of a towering tree and whispering leaves. His heart, once buoyant with the thrill of discovery, now sank with the weight of responsibility. Tell me, Benny, Frankie began, his voice but a croak in the vastness of the forest. Night, how does one little frog, armed with nothing but a shiny trinket and a head full of stories, stand up to a monster? Benny Barrington, wise and gentle as the ancient oak he stood beside, gazed down at Frankie with kind amber eyes that held a galaxy of understanding. You start by hopping forward, Frankie, he reassured, his words as soft as moss under paw, and you remember you're not alone. I'm right here with you. Frankie nodded, drawing strength from his friend's unwavering support. With a determined puff of his cheeks, he leaped into action, hopping alongside Benny through the underbrush. Their journey illuminated by fireflies winking like tiny lighthouses among the ferns. Excuse me, Mr. Hedgehog, Frankie said, his words tumbling out as they stumbled upon a prickly ball of spines, snuffling through the leaf litter. Have you seen anything monstrous about? Something big enough to blot out the stars and snatch away happiness? Only my mother-in-law and her last visit, the hedgehog muttered, muttered without looking up, his nose busy with the earth's secrets. But if you hear anything about a monster, prick up your ears and let me know. Of course, replied Frankie, tipping an imaginary hat he wished he had. On they went deeper into the whispers of the forest where the shadows played tricks and the night air hummed with unseen life. They passed by a cluster of rabbits, their ears twitching like satellite dishes tuned to the gossip network of the woods. Rabbits, Frankie called, his words laced with urgency. Any word on a creature most foul, thieving away friends in the dead of night? Only that it's got a terrible table manners, a particularly fluffy rabbit responded, and it ever says please or thank you. Thank you, Frankie echoed earnestly with a respectful nod before bounding away, leaving the rabbits to their nocturnal nibblings. Benny slumbered beside him, a rock of calm in the swirling sea of uncertainty. Don't lose hope, Frankie. The forest is wide and she'll off wise and she'll offer us clues in her own way. Clues, mused Frankie, a spark igniting his wide, hopeful eyes. Yes, we must be detectives, Benny. Capes fluttering in the wind, magnify glasses at hand. Perhaps the perhaps leave the capes for another adventure, Benny chuckled, his deep laugh rumbling like a gentle brook. Keep your eyes peeled and your spirits high, Frankie. Our quest has only begun. And indeed, as Frankie and Benny ventured forth with laughter and courage entwining like ivy around an old oak tree, the heart of the forest beat with them, echoing their resolve to save their friend and restore peace to their emerald home. Frankie Green's legs ached from hopping, but his determination didn't waver. He and Benny Barrington had been scouring the forest for hours, seeking any clue that would lead them to the monster and save their friend Lucy. As they delved deeper into the enchanted woodland, they arrived at a clearing where the sun played peekaboo through the leaves, casting dappled shadows on the forest floor. Look, Frankie pointed with a web finger, it's Samantha Squirrel. Indeed, Samantha was in the midst of a daring aerial escapade, leaping from branch to branch with aerobatic finesse. Her bushy tail followed her like a comet's fiery trail as she landed gracefully atop a sturdy oak. Hiya, Samantha, Frankie called, trying to sound casual, but ended up sounding more breathless than a toad after a jumpathon. We're on a super important adventure. Want to join? Samantha eyed him skeptically with one paw's paw poised on her hip. I heard about your adventure, Frankie, she said, her tone teasing yet tinted with doubt. You've been telling quite the tale. How much of it is squirrel-sized fact and how much it is frog-sized fiction? Frankie's cheeks turned a shade greener, which was quite a feat considering his already vibrant hue. Benny watched his amber eyes gentle but expectant. Okay, okay, Frankie admitted, his shoulders sagging slightly. Maybe I did embellish the story a smidge, but this time it's all true. 
we really need do need to find the monster and rescue Lucy. Embellished, huh? Samantha flickered her tail, a smirk playing on her lips. Tell you what, Frankie, promise me, Pinky promise me, that from now on you'll stick to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you owl. Cross my heart and hope to croak, Frankie held up his pinky solemnly, his wide eyes earnest. All right then, Samantha chuckled, extending her own tiny paw to lock pinkies with him. Count me in. This forest could use a dash of squirrel savvy, don't you think? Absolutely, Frankie Bean, relieved and invigorated by Samantha's acceptance. Your memory and sharp eyes are just what we need. Great, Samantha exclaimed. Let's scurry to it then. With Samantha now part of their merry band, the trio ventured onward. Her quick wit kept them chuckling, her resourcefulness helping them navigate through thickets and brambles that would have left Frankie tangled and Benny scratching his head. Did you know, Samantha began as they hopped and lumbered along, that moss grows thickest on the north side of trees? Handy if you're ever lost. Wow, Frankie marveled. You're like a walking, talking compass. More like scampering, she corrected with a wink. Their laughter echoed through the woodland, a sweet symphony that wove through the trees and lifted their spirits. The journey may have been fraught with unknown dangers, but with friends like these at his side, Frankie felt as brave as a knight in shining armor, albeit a very small green and hoppy knight. Together they were ready to face whatever the forest had in store, their newfound camaraderie lighting their path like fireflies on a moonless night. Frankie's legs pumped like tiny pistons as the group bounded onward, the underbrush a mere blur beneath them, Samantha's fluffy tail flicked this way and that, her eyes scanning their surroundings with the ease of one who'd spent her entire life leaping from limb to limb. Slow down, adventurers, called a voice as steady as the ground itself. What's all this hubbub about? Emerging from a cluster of ferns, Toby the tortoise plodded onto their path, his slow gait a stark contrast to the energetic energy of the trio. Upon his back, he carried not just his shell, but years of forest wisdom etched into every groove and ridge. Ah, Toby, Frankie said, skidding to a halt, kicking up a small cloud of leaves. Just the tortoise we hope to see. We're on a mission to save Lucy and the forest. Indeed, Toby's voice rumbled softly like distant thunder promising rain. Count me in. Oh, an adventure. Prickly, perfect, Penny the porcupine emerged from behind a tree, her quills shivering with anticipation. I've been itching for some excitement. Then it settled, Benny boomed, clapping his large paws together with a, with a sound like two pillows smacking. We're all in this together. Absolutely, Frankie agreed. The more the merrier and the mightier. With their new companions in tow, the group pressed deeper into the heart of the forest where sunlight dappled the ground and ancient trees whispered secrets on the wind. Look, Samantha, Samantha pointed upward to where an enormous tree stood, its gnarled branches reaching toward the sky like the arms of a wide old sage. That's old Mossy Back, the keeper of tales. Stories, eh? Frankie's eyes sparkled at the mention of tales. He loved stories, especially ones about gleaming treasures and sleeping monsters. Old Mossy Back knows about everything in the forest, Toby intoned, his voice echoing the reverence of ages. If anyone can guide us, it's him. Hello, old Mossy Back, Penny called, her voice surprisingly sweet for someone so spiky. The tree's leaves rustled though no breeze was blowing, a deep resonant voice like the earth itself had learned to speak filled the air. Brave little creatures, seek my counsel. What brings you to old Mossy Back? Sir, began Frankie, puffing out his chest. We've come about the monster, the one that's awakened after thousands of years because of the, um, Glimmerstone Jim? The Shimmerstone Jim? Ah, the Shimmerstone Gem, the voice held a note of sadness, a powerful source, force indeed. 
It lies at the heart of your forest history, and now in the wrong hands, it could be the end. Then we must act quickly, Frankie's voice was firm, his resolve unshakable, for Lucy, for the forest, and for all our sakes. Indeed, O Mossy back agreed, but beware, the path ahead is woven with perils unseen. You must be courageous and kind, clever and true. Courageous and kind, I've got you covered, Benny nodded solemnly, his amber eyes aflame with determination. Clever and true, Samantha added, her gaze sharp, but her smile warm. Let's pick up our bravery and shell out some justice, Penny declared, managing to be both fierce and adorable all at once. Ah, uh, and I'll, well, I'll try to be a bit quicker, Toby promised, his smile slowly spreading. Then go forth, old Mossy back encouraged, and remember, the strength of the forest is within each of you. Thank you, old Mossy back, Frankie said, feeling a surge of gratitude and an urgency bubble within him. Stay rooted in friendship, the ancient tree rustled one final time, and you will prevail. With hearts bold and spirits high, the band of friends ventured further still. The glimmer stones fade and Lucy's resting squarely on their tiny shoulders. Together, they would face whatever lay ahead, their laughter and loyalty lighting the way through the twilight of the woods. Chapter 3, The Treacherous Travels The sun was saying its farewells, painting the sky with streaks of tangerine and lilac when Frankie and his band of brave friends came upon a river that roared louder than a grumpy bear after missing his afternoon nap. The water churned and frothed like a giant's bubble bath, and there, right in their path, lay their slippery challenge. Ribbit, Frankie gulped, eyeing the wild waters. That's no puddle to hop over. Nor a log to waddle across, Toby added with a sigh that was almost a whistle. Quills encourage everyone, Penny declared, puffing herself up until she resembled a spiky little ball of determination. We'll find a way. Perhaps there is a way, Benny mused, his amber eyes scanning the riverbank. Look over there, he pointed with a paw to where the remains of an old bridge clung to the bank like the memory of a path long forgotten. Ah, yes, a bridge, Samantha chimed in, her tail twitching with anticipation. With a dash of teamwork, we can rebuild it. So they set to work, each according to their ability. Penny's quills became tools for measuring and marking, while Toby, though slow, was steady as he pushed and prodded loose bank planks back into place. Samantha darted about, nimble and quick, tying knots and securing ropes, and Benny provided the muscle, his sturdy limbs pushing and pulling the wood into alignment. Frankie, with his leaping prowess, acted as scout, hopping back and forth, encouraging his friends with cheers and the occasional giggle when someone made a tiny squeak or splash. Great job, team, Frankie exclaimed as they all stood before their handiwork, a slightly wobbly but altogether passable bridge who knew a porcupine's quills could double as nails or a tortoise's patience would outlast a river's rage toby added pleased with himself or that a squirrel's tail makes quick the ha makes quite the handy broom samantha said sweeping away the last of the debris with a flourish or that a frog's enthusiasms can lift spirits higher than the tallest oak. Benny smiled warmly at Frankie. Enough talk. Let's hop to it, Frankie called. And one by one, they crossed the makeshift bridge, hearts light with laughter and the bond of friendship growing stronger with each step they took. No sooner had they reached the other side than a shadow fell upon them and a voice boomed from the rocky heights above. Friends of the forest, why do you hurry so? They looked to see Danny Caprine perched as if on the point of a pencil top. Do that one more time. They looked up to see Danny Caprine perched as if on the point of a pencil atop a craggy ledge. Frankie hopped forward, his voice carrying upward, strong and true. Danny, we seek to save our home and Lucy from a creature most foul, stirred by my own unwitting tale. Frankie briefly recounted their mission, the shimmer stone 
the glimmer stone glinting in his pocket as he spoke of the ancient monster seeking to return. Ah, I've heard your story echo against these cliffs, Danny nodded sagely. The beast you speak of has indeed awakened and it stalks the night with eyes aflame. Then we must be swift, Frankie's resolve was fierce as he clutched the gem. Danny, will the mountain paths lead us to where the creature dwells? Indeed, but tread carefully, for the journey is fraught with peril, Danny advised before leaping down to join them with a grace that belied his size. I shall guide you through the mountains. Together we shall face this threat head on. Thank you, Danny, Frankie said, a smile spreading across his froggy face. With friends like you, I believe we can leap any obstacle. Then let's save Lucy and put that creature back to bed, Penny cheered, her quills rattling like tiny swords ready for battle. Indeed, Toby agreed. Slow and steady wins the rescue. Rescue party assemble, Samantha cried, her voice a rallying cry in the twilight. United we hop, Frankie led the way, his heart thumping not with fear, but with hope and the unshakable belief that together they could save their forest and their friend. With determination, the little group journeyed up the mountain. Soon they came across a steep cliff that seemed impossible to climb. No problem, declared Danny confidently. Watch and learn. With remarkable agility and strength, Danny scaled the cliff with ease, finding footholds where none seemed apparent. Wow, that was amazing, Benny gasped in awe. I've never seen anything like it, Penny added. Danny simply smiled and offered a hand to help his friends up the cliff. As they reached the top and caught their breath, they realized that their journey was far from over. A thick fog had descended upon them and obscured the path. We can't see a thing, Samantha cried out in frustration. Don't worry, Frankie reassured her. We'll just have to use our other senses. With his keen sense of smell and hearing, Frankie led them through the fog until they finally emerged on the other side. As they emerged from the fog, the sun began to set and cast a red glow over the land. The group hurried on knowing that time was of the essence, but as they ventured further up the mountain, they came upon a narrow bridge spanning a chasm below. Unfortunately, the bridge was guarded by a fearsome creature, a giant troll with warty skin and a club in hand. Oh no, Benny whimpered, what are we going to do now? We don't stand a chance against that thing, Samantha added, her voice trembling. <clears throat> Toby's eyes widened in fear as he looked at the troll blocking their path. We have to turn back, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. No, Frankie declared fiercely. We can't turn back now. Lucy needs us. You're right, Penny chimed in, her quills bri bristling with determination. We won't be defeated by some ugly troll. Danny nodded in agreement. Together, we can overcome any obstacles. The friends huddled together, trying to come up with a plan. They needed to distract the troll in order to get across the bridge. Just then, Benny spotted something glinting on the ground nearby. It was a shiny metal object. Perhaps it had fallen from the troll's pocket. Look, Benny exclaimed excitedly. That could be our key to getting across. That's it, Frankie exclaimed. We'll use this as bait. As the group quickly put their plan into action, they tied one end of Danny's scarf around the metal object and tossed it into the chasm below, making sure it landed with a loud clanking noise. The troll turned towards the sound and lumbered over to investigate. Now's our chance, Frankie shouted as they made a run for it across the bridge. But just as they were about to reach safety on the other side, the troll turned back and saw them fleeing. The troll let out a deafening roar as it turned and saw the group fleeing across the bridge. It quickly began to lumber towards them, its club raised high in the air. We have to keep moving, Samantha shouted, her footsteps quickening. But just as they were about to reach safety on the other side, the troll let out a loud bellow and charged at them with full force. Toby tripped over a loose stone on the bridge as he fell. He grabbed onto the troll's foot and pulled it down with him. With a loud crash, the troll tumbled into the chasm below, disappearing from sight. 
The group stood frozen for a moment, surprised at what had just happened. Then they all let out whoops of joy and hugged each other tightly. We did it, Penny exclaimed. We made it across. Thanks to you, Toby, Benny said gratefully. I didn't do much, Toby replied modestly, modestly. Just some lucky timing. Frankie patted Toby on the back. Luck or not, you saved us all. All right, so now we're to chapter four. Poof, and he is gone. As they continued their journey up the mountain, they encountered more challenges, treacherous cliff sides and narrow paths along steep drops, but together they overcame each obstacle with courage and determination. Finally, they reached their destination, an ancient castle atop the mountain peak. They could see Lucy's tower from where they stood, but before they could make their way inside, they were met by yet another obstacle, an enormous dragon blocking their path. Oh no, Danny whispered in fear. What are we going to do now? But Vinnie stepped forward with confidence. Leave this one to me, he declared. Before anyone could protest, Benny took off running towards the dragon. He jumped onto its back and began tugging on its scales with all his might. The dragon let out a mighty roar and began thrashing around, trying to shake Benny off, but Benny held on tight, determined to distract the dragon long enough for his friends to sneak past and enter the castle. To the dragon, Benny was like a pesky fly that needed to be swatted. He tried shaking him off his back, but Benny refused to let go. The more the dragon roared and thrashed, the harder Benny pulled on its scales. Come on, guys, he shouted over his sho shoulder. Now's your chance. The rest of the group hesitated at first, unsure if they should leave their friend behind. But then they saw that Benny was holding his own against the dragon, and they knew they had to take this opportunity. One by one, they ran past the distracted dragon and made their way into the castle. Inside, they were met by Slumbertail's minions, dark creatures with glowing red eyes and sharp claws. But with their newfound courage from facing their fears on their journey up the mountain, the group fought bravely against them. Toby used his slingshot to take down several creatures from a distance, while Penny wielded her sword with precision. Samantha called upon her magic powers to create powerful gusts of wind that blew away some of their enemies. Danny, who had been quiet for most of their journey, surprised everyone when he revealed his hidden talent. He could communicate with animals. He called out for help for nearby, from nearby forest animals who quickly came to their aid in defeating Slumbertail's minions. Meanwhile, Benny was still holding on tight to the dragon's neck. He could feel the creature's hot breath on his neck and hear its angry growls, but he refused to give up. As he continued pulling on the dragon's scales, something caught his eye. A glint of gold in the corner of the dragon's mouth. Curiosity getting the better of him, Benny reached out and grabbed hold of whatever it was. To his surprise, it was a golden key. Without thinking twice, Benny scrambled off the dragon's neck and ran towards Lucy's tower. As he approached, he saw Frankie standing outside looking up at the tower with determination in his eyes. Frankie, Benny yelled as he ran towards him, I've got the key! Frankie turned to look at him with, a, with relief and excitement. That must be the key to Lucy's tower. Quick, let's go! Together, they rushed into the tower and made their way upstairs. The higher they climbed, the more they could feel Slumbertail's dark magic surrounding them. But they pushed through it with all their might until they reached a locked door at the very top of the tower. With trembling hands, Benny inserted the key into the lock and turned it. With a loud click, the door swung open. Inside was a large room filled with all sorts of strange contraptions and potions, and in one corner stood Lucy. You've come, she said in a voice that seemed to echo around them. Yes, we came for you, Frankie replied bravely. Lucy nodded knowingly. I knew someone would come for me, she said with a huge smile spreading across her furry little face. Just then they heard a commotion coming from outside. Benny quickly peeked out and saw their friends were still fighting against Slumbertail's minions. We have to hurry, he urged Lucy. Our friends need our help. Lucy great gave him a grateful hug, then hurried out of the tower with Frankie and Benny hot on her bunny tail. 
As they emerged from the tower, they could see that the battle was not going well. Slumbertail's minions seemed to have multiplied and were overpowering their friends. Without hesitation, Lucy ran towards the fray with Frankie and Benny close behind her. She let out a powerful growl that startled everyone on the battlefield. Suddenly, when vines started sprouting from the ground and wrapping themselves around Slumbertail's minions, holding them into place. At the same time, Danny called out for his animal friends once again, and they charged into battle, attacking Slumbertail's army with fierceosity. Benny joined in by using his newfound key as a weapon. It seemed to possess some sort of magical power that could weaken Slumbertail's wet minions. Together, the trio fought against Slumbertail's army until there were only a few left standing. With a loud screech, Slumbertail himself appeared on the battlefield. He was even larger and more menacing than Benny had imagined, but Benny refused to back down. He held the key up in one hand while standing, steadying himself for what he must do. Slumbertail lunged at them with his sharp paws ready to strike, but just as he was about to reach them, Danny let out a loud whistle that echoed through the forest. And in an in instant, an enormous eagle, eagle swooped down from above and attacked Slumbertail head on. The two creatures clashed in midair, causing chaos all around them. With a final burst of strength, Benny charged towards Slumbertail with all his might and thrust the key into Slumbertail's chest. There was a blinding flash of light followed by an incredible roar that shook the entire forest. Benny was thrown to the ground. When he opened his eyes again, he saw that everything had changed. The dark clouds had disappeared. Sunlight poured through the treetops once more. As the blinding light faded, Benny saw that everything around them had changed. The once withered and gray plants and trees were now lush and green and full of life once again. The dark clouds had disappeared, revealing a clear blue sky. Sunlight poured through the treetops, warming their faces. Benny felt a sense of relief wash over him as he realized that the spell had been broken and the glimmer stone was safe. But there was still one thing left to do. The monster that had caused all this chaos needed to be destroyed. With a determined look on his face, Benny turned to face Slumbertail. The giant monster was lying on the ground, weakened by the power of the key. But he wasn't giving up without a fight. With a loud roar, Slumbertail tried to stand up, but he couldn't seem to find his footing. Benny knew that this was their chance. He charged once more towards Slumbertail with all his might and thrust the key into his chest once more. There was another blinding flash of light, followed by a deafening roar that shook the ground beneath him. When Benny opened his eyes again, he saw that Slumbertail had vanished into thin air along with his army of minions. The forest fell silent once again as everyone stood in awe of what had just happened. And then they heard it, applause coming from all directions. Their friends came running towards them with wide smiles on their faces and Frankie was leading the pack and he looked like he couldn't be happier. Friends, he began, his voice quivering slightly but growing steadier with each word. I've learned something bigger than any frog or forest. I've learned that my tall tails can tangle us up in a big mess. He held up the glittering gem aloft, its light casting playful sparkles on the leaves around them. But I've also learned that being brave means being honest. Everyone cheered and hugged Frankie. Chapter 5, Froggy Lessons Learned After the defeat of Slumbertail and the restoration of the forest, Danny and his friends gathered around the Glimmerstone. The gem was now glowing with a bright green light signaling that it was no longer in danger. The creatures of the forest rejoiced and thanked Frankie and his friends for their bravery. But amidst all the celebration, Frankie looked troubled. He realized that his tall tales had caused harm to his friends and nearly destroyed their home. Feeling guilty, he stepped forward and spoke up. I, I'm sorry, he said with a shaky voice. I didn't mean to cause all this chaos. I just wanted to make myself seem more than I am. Benny put a comforting hand on Frankie's shoulder. It's okay, Frankie, he said. We all make mistakes. But my lies almost cost us everything, Frankie replied, tears welling up in his eyes. Frankie, Daisy chimed in. We know you didn't mean any harm. Your stories are just a part of who you are. But I don't want to be defined by my lies anymore, Frankie exclaimed. I want to be known for her who I truly am. And who is that? asked Martin. I'm just a small frog with big dreams, Frankie admitted with a sad smile. 
And there's nothing wrong with that, Danny reassured him. But remember, telling stories is fine as long as they're not hurting anyone or causing any harm. Frankie nodded, feeling relieved that his friends understood and accepted him as they basked in the glow of the Glimmerstone. They made a promise to always be honest with each other and themselves. Time passed and life in the forest returned to normal once again. But this time, Frankie was not known not only for his wild stories, but also for his honesty and bravery. Each time their eyes landed on the Glimmerstone, it served as a reminder of their incredible adventure and the valuable lesson they had learned about the importance of honesty and integrity. Who would have thought a simple frog's leap could have such a profound impact? Benny pondered aloud as he walked along sighed Frankie. And not just a frog's leave, but also a squirrel scamper, a porcupine's prance, a tortoise's trot, and a goat's gallant gamble, Frankie replied with a wide, wide grin. Indeed, Lucy chimed in, twirling with joy. It was all because one little frog discovered the power of honesty. Together, they reveled in the unbreakable bond they had formed, an unlikely fellowship that had saved their world. Through his journey, Frankie had transformed from a fibbing frog into a true hero who understood the magic of truth and believing in oneself and in others' dreams. I really hope you guys enjoyed my my very first short story, children's story. Um, I enjoyed writing it, and I have so many more planned that I will be reading. Um, I may have some changes coming, so I will announce those when I get ready to ready for that. So, but anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed my first story, and I hope that your little one enjoyed it too, if you have a little one, or if you're an adult like me and you love to read or be read to, I really hope you enjoyed it. I want to wish you all a wonderful evening and sweet, sweet dreams. Now you sleep peacefully and restfully. Uh, till later, bye for now.